across the fence, a visit to the University of Vermont's Fleming Museum. I'll visit with the museum's director about the current exhibitions, which include a focus on food and images of everyday life. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. The Fleming Museum at UVM houses Vermont's most comprehensive collection of art and anthropological artifacts. There are more than 25,000 objects from cultures worldwide in the museum's collections. The museum also offers special changing exhibitions throughout the year. One of the current specials gives us a glimpse into everyday life. Keith Silva has the story. Men in hats. An old woman getting off the bus. A dog begging for scraps. A new exhibit at the University of Vermont's Fleming Museum asks visitors to look again. There's a lot of detail here. That's very true. And the, the curator of this exhibit is, is the museum's director, like Janie Cohen. You are looking at a number of examples of what is called genre art. So genre, like landscape or still life, is just a kind of subject matter. And what it is is scenes of everyday life. This is one of the things that led me to call the show Look Again, because in general, beyond the 17th century work, the photography, everything you think is staged is candid and vice versa. Genre art began in Holland. The exhibition opens with works by the 17th century Dutch printmaker, Adrian van Olstadt. It's really the best known printmaker after Rembrandt. Hmm. And he would just wander around, around Amsterdam, um, around the areas that he lived in, and um, really create images of what he saw you know, and what he remembered. And so you see people eating in their homes, you see people worshiping, you see people playing, napping, drinking, you know, all of these just very mundane things. And one of the reasons why I think the, that genre is so popular still is because we can immediately relate to it. Um, you know, and even if they're wearing clothes very different from ours, they're doing activities that are very similar to what we do today. Scottish photographer John Thompson documented the lives of East Londoners in the Victorian era. Thompson's work has a historical significance that's easy to take for granted in today's world. He was really the first, one of the first, if not the very first, photojournalists. So he was documenting the working poor. So you have everything from women selling flowers in Covent Garden Market to men who actually picked up bodies of the deceased. So you name it, I mean, every service that was offered and goods and services that were offered in the street is pictured in these. The more contemporary work in the show brings up questions of identity, collaboration, and reminds visitors not to take what they see for granted. Take, for example, the photographer Nikki Lee. The images she presents are as much about her as the people being photographed. And there is an aspect of voyeurism in genre work, always. So what Nikki did was she, she joined various subcultures of which she was not a member. Um, and you name it, and she did it. So, you know, a group of um, seniors, you know, of, of elderly people, hip-hop group, um, group of young Japanese. So what she did was to change her visual identity, and sometimes she dyed her skin, she changed her hairstyle, she used makeup, and she began to hang out with them. And then at a certain point, um, you know, would hand somebody a camera and just say, you know, take some pictures of me or of us. And so, you know, what you see in the show are four examples of that where, you know, you would be hard pressed to recognize her in, in some of them. Subverting expectations and asking what's real is one of the themes of Look Again. Because we see genre work all the time and we tend to assume, oh, it's a scene of daily life, it's real. Um, you know, I, I wanted to get to some of, the, some of the issues and some of the ideas and some of the manipulations and some of the strategies behind, um, you know, behind scenes of everyday life throughout the years. And then looking at the 21st century, you know, these issues go, are interwoven, but in, in the present time, um, artists really go out of their way to complicate things and, you know, and put twists on them and make us think about them. Who knew daily life could be so complicated or so real? At the University of Vermont, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence.
Well, joining me here in the studio is Fleming Museum Director Janie Cohen. It's good to have you back again. It's great to be here. Now, tell me a little bit about the whole issue of voyeurism when it comes to genre art. <laughs> it's, it's all over it. Um, <laughs> so the, just the idea of um, scenes of everyday life, um, we're let into exactly that in a variety of cultures and time periods. Um, as you get into the 20 and 21st century, it's the, the issue of voyeurism is much more, um, it's, it's part of the intent. You know, let me, the, the photographer, the artist is saying, um, you know, here's a window into a subculture that, you know, that isn't normally seen. Um, but even in uh, the 17th century work, you you know we're let into places that we uh, you know we normally wouldn't wouldn't be or wouldn't even notice. You know, right, exactly. walk by and not even look or even have it register until you see it as a piece of artwork. Exactly, blown up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, now you pointed out that, that genre art is something that we can relate to. Can you expand that a little yeah. bit more? I mean, even um, from the 17th century. Yeah, exactly. That's what really struck me in this exhibition. When you're looking at the Adrian Van Ostad works, you know, you see a group of people playing, um, you know, playing backgammon um, or having a beer. So um, it takes you right back. It's like the, you know, the centuries just disappear and. Um, it's, I think of all of the, the kinds of art, it really is genre, you know, these kinds of scenes that, um, you know, that can connect us across the centuries and across the cultures because you just relate to it. Right, and then, and then the, the newer artist, of course, obviously, in this day and age when everyone's taking pictures of themselves. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's right in. That's right. Well, another special <laughs> exhibition at the Fleming opened in September, and it runs through May of 2014. Yeah. It's called Eat the Social Life of Food. For more on that, here's Across the Fences, Rebecca Gollin. It makes me hungry when I look at it, and visitors tell me the same thing. At first glance, the bread in this painting looks good enough to eat. A bit of research reveals that its backstory is not such a pretty picture. It was painted during the Great Depression at a time when many, many people were hungry, when people were on bread lines. The piece is part of a current exhibition at the University of Vermont's Fleming Museum, entitled Eat, the Social Life of Food. The show examines the relationship between people and food across cultures. So we were looking for something that would draw across the collections, draw culturally, and then across different types of objects in the collections. As with any exhibit, each piece on display is meticulously researched by the show's curator. Or, to be more accurate, by one of the show's 19 curators. It wasn't an easy task, especially because these curators were UVM students who had never curated a museum exhibit before. Oh, and they had one semester to put it together. Our job was to take those objects and create a story. We got to choose an object and then we had to go look for background information and um, write out you know, the caption that goes f beneath it in the exhibit. So a lot of um, going through books and internet um, articles and looking for, looking for info. I actually had to contact someone over in the Philippines. The Introduction to Museum Studies class is a collaboration between the Fleming Museum and the Department of Anthropology. We're really deliberate about teaching them how to write labels, you know, this nitty-gritty stuff. Teach, giving them opportunities to sample layout, giving them opportunities to look at and critique online and brick-and-mortar exhibits. So pr all of that practice allows them to build their own vision of what the exhibit will be. A lot of what we learned about was like how each piece is constructed within the exhibit, about how much text you should have with a piece to make sure that the viewer gets enough information but at the same time isn't bogged down because the flow of an exhibit is really important. Otherwise, if people can't move through it and get all the information they need, then they won't take what we're trying to explain through the exhibit and they might just move on to the next room. Jeffrey Matthews took the class and then spent the summer as an intern at the Fleming, helping to set up the exhibit. And I got to learn little tidbits about all these different cultures, about how food works within their society and how food works in comparison to how we view food versus how important food might be to them or just the idea of sitting down for a meal or the idea of celebration through food and there's all these different cultural aspects which food really exemplifies because it's a universal thing but at the same time it's so unique to every single culture. The students not only spent time researching and preparing their specific piece for the exhibition, they also spent time working in groups 
figuring out ways to expand the exhibit beyond the walls of the Fleming. As a result, there are a number of objects and images from other UVM departments on display, alongside some more unusual features. And we split them into groups and we said, hey, what are some ideas for community outreach? What are some ideas for interactives to put in the exhibit? You know, what do you want to do with the online component? The ideas the students came up with not only bring technology into the exhibit, they invite viewers to become part of the show as well. We have an iPad within the exhibition where people can share their food stories. And we're also asking people from anywhere, actually, to email us photographs of food through Instagram, Twitter, and through an email account. Those photos are put into rotation on a monitor in the exhibit, where they will stay for the duration of the show. As for the students, class is over, but they're still on campus. Some, like Matthews, are planning to continue museum studies. During this class, it really helped me to look at all the detail work that goes in museums that you never really understand until you're behind the scenes and you see what's actually going on in the creation of an exhibit. And now, the EAT exhibit at the Fleming Museum is ready for viewers to dig in. In Burlington, I'm Rebecca Gollan with Across the Fence. Next generation of curators. Yes. So I don't think a lot of people realize how the educational mission of the museum extends well beyond the artifacts. Absolutely. Um, so we, uh, we teach students and um, K through 12 kids what museums are about, you know, how you can learn through them, how you can help teach through them. So um, with this exhibition, for instance, the, the students are really learning how to be curators. Um, and it is a, it's just a really wonderful way to learn. It, it enhances classroom teaching in a, in, a, in a really exciting way. It does. Well, what about the Fleming's relationship with the UVM's Honors College? Honors College has been so important um, in helping the students to have the opportunity to create these exhibitions. So for instance, this, um, the EAT exhibition, um, was an Honors College course uh, that was taught by J. Jennifer Dickinson um, and our um, manager of collections and exhibitions, Margaret Tammy Lonis. Um, so it was, it's called Intro to Museum Studies. <clears throat> and this really is kind of a, a small um, curatorial studies program. Um, there are other courses that have been taught through the Honors College with faculty coming from a wide variety of disciplines. So mathematics, Sheila Weaver um, taught a course called Mathematics and Art through the Honors College that ended up in a great exhibition at the Fleming a couple years ago that was called Systems in Art. Um, so it, it's really kind of a, a clearinghouse or a, you know, a, a a place where faculty from a wide range of fields come and are encouraged to use the Fleming collections and other collections on campus in teaching. Well, what I loved about that exhibit too is I never thought I'd see an iPad in yeah, a museum yeah, right, as part exactly. of the exhibit. Yeah, yeah. No, that's been great. And it's not just UVM students who can take advantage of the opportunities too. Yeah, we have been working um, for you know for decades and decades um, with K through 12 classes throughout. Um, I mean, way beyond Burlington. Right now, we have a um, a partnership with Integrated Arts Academy, which has really been wonderful, and we're um, we're aiming towards working in the same way as we are with faculty. You know, we want the teachers to know what this teaching resource is. Um, and so now classes, the teachers are coming in for workshops and then classes from, um, from IAA and other schools come in for tours of the collection or tours of the exhibition and then an art activity. And so what do you think the kids take away from that? Um, there, in many cases, it's, it's a first introduction to art, and so it's really, um, you know, just having this, this interaction with these amazing objects. And then, for instance, we have a beautiful um, Amazonian feather headdress, this huge, colorful um, piece hanging in the museum. Um, so they look at that, it's a rare object, and then come down to the activity room and create their own masks. And they, they're, they're, you can see their imagination just exploding. It's that's, been really exciting. That's fantastic. Well, to find out more about the Fleming Museum, you can check the website, FlemingMuseum.org, or you can call the museum at 656-2090, that's 656-2090, and you can get up-to-date information about the museum's exhi exhibitions and collections, and also about its hours and admission costs. Janie, I want to thank you so much. Thank you. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.